Welcome to this introductory lecture on the integral control volume approach. The next few lectures will be using these macroscopic large control volumes for analyzing fluid mechanic systems. We're going to be uh, using conservation of mass and Newton's second law for these large control volumes. Uh, we won't talk much about the first law of thermodynamics. You've done that if you've had a thermodynamics course. Uh, we'll instead focus here just on conservation of mass and Newton's second law. We'll touch on the first law later in the course, but we won't do it so much now over the next few lectures. Um, most everything else in this course builds on what we're going to cover in the next few lectures, dealing with conservation of mass and the linear momentum equations. The linear momentum equations are just Newton's second law for a control volume. Um, <clears throat> so everything else will build on what we do over the next few lectures. Uh, we'll do it in the next few lectures for large integral or macroscopic control volumes. And then after that, we'll look at differential or small, you know, infinitesimally small control volumes. And then later in the course, um, we'll derive tools that uh, are based on these integral or differential control volumes. Um, dealing with these macroscopic control volumes is very powerful because you don't need to know the details of what's happening inside the control volume. You just need to know what's coming into the control volume, what's going out of the control volume, and generally how things are changing inside. So it's a powerful approach because you can analyze systems without knowing all of the, the details. Um, <clears throat> so we'll start from uh, conservation of mass, as I mentioned, and then go into the New Newton's second law, which we call the new, uh, linear momentum equations. And we're going to start from a system perspective We'll talk about what that is in, in an upcoming lecture, but basically uh, we'll be applying those laws to systems. You might remember that from thermodynamics, but basically that's a, a quantity of matter chosen for study because it's easiest to apply those laws, or I mean, it's easiest to, to write down those laws for a system, but when we apply them, we're going to apply them to control volumes. Control volumes are a region in space that we've chosen for study. And so we'll need a tool to convert between those two, and we'll derive that tool. That's called the Reynolds Transport Theorem. So we'll write conservation of mass and the linear momentum equation for a system because it's more natural to write it out for a system. And then we'll use this Reynolds Transport Theorem to convert it over to control volume point of view because it's easier to apply conservation of mass and the linear momentum equations for control volumes. So that's where we're headed over the next few lectures. Again, it's a very important part of this course. Everything else will build on it, so make sure uh, you have these, these topics, conservation of mass and linear momentum equation, um, down pat. By the end of this, you really want to have a strong foundation before we go into the next topic after that.